I, I, I'm a weird, uh, you know, you had mentioned that you had seen some of my podcasts and debates and stuff on the issue of abolition and, and, uh, a pro-life kind of things. And so I find myself a little bit in the middle to where I don't really have a, have a home. <laughs> I, the abolitionists don't call, don't like to, to, uh, uh, own me and the, and the, uh, pro-life establishment doesn't either. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I find myself in a similar situation. Um, I, I consider myself to be a, uh, abolitionist, um, because at the end of the day, I want equal protection under the law. So when we're talking about abolition, we're talking about, uh, if we truly believe that it is a life that is in the womb, um, then we have to also go, with our logic, we have to follow it through to its conclusion, which is that uh, abortion is murder. And so if abortion is murder, then there has to be penalties for murder for those involved. Um, I think uh, a lot of individuals get squeamish about that because they they talk about the second victim narrative with the woman. Um, and I'm sure that there are instances where there is a second victim uh, insofar as I think that there are maybe young, impressionable girls that have truly been tricked by the propaganda. Um, but uh, most of these women, I don't think fit that, uh, yeah. that category. Um, there are many videos that, uh, um, so many of, of, uh, these Christian commentators will share on Twitter of, of these women intentionally laughing and praising the fact that they're going to go and get abortion. There's like gender reveal, uh, videos where they say it's, uh, aborted. you know, yeah. I mean, just horrible, horrible things where these, these women are truly joking at the, at the, uh, the erasure of their children. Um, and so I think the second victim narrative is, is very weak. Um, but that being said, uh, for my audience, I'm kind of um, laying this out for you. Uh, a judge ultimately has the ability to make the determination. If the judge is, is looking at a 16-year-old girl who truly believed the propaganda that it was just a clump of cells, there was no baby, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the judge can give her a lighter sentence than he exactly. would the abortion doctor. Yeah. That's the whole reason why we want equal protection because it is brought up as this is a murder charge, but uh, it was this was this a, a young girl who is coerced by a uh, someone yeah. in, in authority over her. Um, yeah. The judge has the ability to make that determination. Um, so, you know, maybe the in that instance, the uh, abortion doctor can be charged like a full criminal, a uh, full murderer would be. And, uh, you know, this um, this 16 year old girl would I don't think she should get off scot free. But I think that, you know, you could argue yeah. in that instance that if you want to use the second victim narrative, I think that there's space uh, in allowing uh, discretion of a judge um, uh, to actually uh, give some some leniency to uh, the few individuals that yeah. might fit that second victim narrative um, if we're wanting to steel man that position. Uh, yeah, for sure. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, that that's pretty much where I stand. I mean, per, first of all, and, and this has been addressed too, like I need to even think through because yeah, I kind of gotten really red pilled to the justice system in general just being a victim of it um just being on the other side having been arrested having been through prison and jails or not prison but jails thank god i haven't been to prison yet but jails and for my pro-life work and pro-life activism um seeing the injustice of the legal system and the lack of due process the um you know, innocent, it's just, just real clear violations of civil rights and liberties. Like there's needs to be so much justice reform in that to reflect God's law that I don't even know if I, in this current situation where we find ourselves in this unjust, really wicked kind of world that we're living in, if I even believe in capital punishment at this point, I think there needs to be serious work and in, in due process to fit the type of biblical due process that would justify taking someone's life. And so, um, so th even that it's like kind of that off the table, but even if that weren't the case, Every other murder or homicide or you know situation where someone dies, you're you're given charges based on the evidence, but then those charges can be amended in a court of law. A judge gets to determine based on the evidence how culpable you are. Is this involuntary manslaughter? Did you know 
what, you know, uh, somebody who runs over a, a sack of a human sack of potatoes and does at late at night and doesn't know whether or not it's a human being and kill accidentally kills somebody. That's a very different thing than actually with malice and forethought um, ending someone's life. And so um, all of this, <laughs> you know, would obviously be taken into consideration. And as you said, if a young woman, um, w you know, willfully or, or even went in um, and it, it wasn't actually, it wasn't willful. If her parents coerced her, then, then those are the people that needs to be judged if it's a boyfriend or a pimp. And just this whole category of people that the pro-life establishment or Inc., the pro-life Inc. does not want to um, uh, make that a crime at all, then it's actually running cover for pimps, for uh abusive husbands, abusive boyfriends, people that coerce them into um, committing these these acts and destroying, raping women's souls is what I, I call it. And um, there's a whole culture of toxic uh, men that are created by this abortion culture. And it's actually the failure to um, make that a crime that runs cover for these men rather than prosecute them. Mm. So I think that is an element of this that we also, it's a huge rhetorical aspect of this we need to bring up.